lesson to each of us in Jesus name hallelujah amen to that amen well praise God let's we uh, stand up on our feet right now we're gonna open up and prayer hallelujah God is good he is faithful God hallelujah praise Jesus beautiful people of God we're so awesome to see you we we just we we just rejoicing with you hallelujah thank you. in the presence of the Lord amen hallelujah. praise God heavenly father we thank you so much thank you. we thank you Lord God for who you are and for everything that you have done continue to do in each of our lives Lord you are God who is able to do great things and Father, we look up to you, and we thank you, Lord God, that you're here in the midst of us, that you're present here in the midst of us. And Lord, we ask in you, Lord God, Holy Spirit, that you are visit us this morning. Touch every person who is here today, and those who is watching this broadcast, because we know it's no distance in the Spirit. So touch your people right now in the name of Jesus Christ, yes, the Lord. Son of the living God. And Father, we lift them to you, Lord God, our man of God, Pastor Larry. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that you are used him this morning as your instrument, as your vessel, Lord God. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you speak your word with a clarity, with a simplicity, Lord God. And Father, as the people of God, we have ears to hear, spiritual ears to hear, and a heart to receive what the Spirit of the Lord has been saying to each of us. Oh, God Almighty, we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord God. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord God, that you are present in this place, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are saturated in your presence, Lord God. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord God, because you are anointing, burden removing, you moving, yoke destroying, power of God. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord God. We ask the people of God, we are seeking your face right now, oh, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord God, that you bring the changes in our lives. In our being, Lord God, we want to be a change. We want to be transformed in your image, in your likeness, Lord God. We are people of God. And Father, let the spirit of the living God will impart in us in such a way like never been before. Let the revelation of your word be imparted into our spirit, Lord God. And Father, we thank you. And we give you a praise. And we give you a glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, amen, and amen. Well, you may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Sure enough, His presence is here. He is here. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for your anointing, for your presence. Hallelujah. God is so good. He is faithful God. He is faithful God. And we want to thank you again, those who is here. We know that the word of God will be ministering to each of us. Amen. And we are excited because we're not coming to the church just to be here, right? We're coming to, to come here to hear from heaven. How many of us want to hear from heaven? Amen. We want to hear from heaven. Amen. We want to hear what the Spirit of the Lord want to speak to us. And we want to receive it. And so when we receive His Word, hallelujah, because the Scripture says His Word to be a lamp of our feet. See, we can stand on His Word. We can stand on His promises. Amen. And we're not just going to be a hearer of the word. We're going to be a doer of the word. What, when, when the Spirit of God will say something to us, we're going to just do it. And we're going to be just obeying. See, that's each of our journey as the children of God. We have to learn how to hear, right? And when we hear, 
I'll be right away with the spirit that the Lord has been saying. See, God, he will lead us and he will direct us. Sometimes you want to make a certain certain things in your life. You look and maybe sell something or you're moving somewhere. But see, faith without work is going to be there. So when you believe in something for maybe a job, new position, new business, you expect, expect that door is going to be open for you. Expect maybe you want to sell something, you expect that buyer come into your life and you try to hear where it's coming from and you, you expect. Hallelujah. Well, I wanted to share with you the example. I like to give the examples, right? So, um, some, some of you know, I have an eight-year-old daughter and some time ago we uh, purchased a rabbit for her the little animal, rabbit, and she had that rabbit for a while, and we pray, Lord, when she's done with him, we need to find some home for him, because right now we have too many animals, and we are very busy, it's not fair to the enemy, 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 animals to, you know, they want to be taken care of properly, and so suddenly, our little daughter, she agreed to sell, find a home for this little rabbit. And and I said, Lord God, that is a breakthrough. And I said, Lord, I want that you bring some supernatural, you know, buyer for this little animal. And then after I was praying, because she was in agreement to find a good home. And then I pray, I said, Lord, it's not easy because it's, he don't have enough pedigree, he's just a little black rabbit. And then suddenly I have that impression to go to the computer and to put on a Craigslist ad. And see, that's what one of the things we should never procrastinate. When you hear the Spirit of God speak to you, do something, it's mean it's right now. You need to do it. Not tomorrow, not after tomorrow. When you hear the voice of the Lord, you obey right away. And what? And make the story short, right away I have someone call supernaturally. I know it was directed by the Lord. We were able to replace this wonderful <laughs> small little animal to the beautiful uh, young lady with a cage and all of these things. But see, God is concerned about even little things in our lives. He's concerned. He knows how much we can take and what should be in our life for such a season and what should not. So we all have to be directed by the Lord. So maybe some of you have to do certain things, maybe looking for a new position, new, uh, you know, new direction in this 2020, this year. So the whole thing should be leave behind and now is a new time. You are stepping in into the new season. You are stepping in into the new season. And so when you step into the new season, you kind of leave the things behind. See, the enemy sometimes try to put us in a little box of this circle of the comfortable zone. But one, God wants to be expand. See, we must expect him from from him abundantly things health prosperity spirit soul mind body and every area I'm not talking about financial just things because you know you could be sick and your finances is not gonna do you no good the the prosperity in every area in your life to prosper and bless Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord God. And you just speak these blessings over you. Father, I thank you. I receive the blessings. See, when the blessings of the Lord is up in your life, no matter where you're going to go, even that office, that business, that company, they will be blessed because all around you is a blessing. 
Some people, they carry the curse up in their life. That person, he has the, his house burned out. He moved to his cousin. The cousin's house burned out. Now both of them move into some another cousin and his house burn out. Well, something is wrong with that picture. That person is carrying some curse up in his life. So bushes could be broke for the blood of Jesus. If someone walking and you constantly have some things to happen, you have to recognize certain things. First of all, we examine our self, right? If we commit some sin or do something that is opening door for the enemy enter into our life, first thing we say, Father, forgive me. Not with the man, just the mouse, but with the heart. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. I confess my sin, Lord. I ask in your God to forgive me. And I thank you, Father, that I receive your forgiveness. I thank you, Father, that the blood of Jesus is cleansing me. That's first step. You have received the forgiveness. You receive it. And, and, and the scripture says, go and sin no more. It's mean you have to hate that sin. You have to turn from that sin and go to the opposite way. Then, when you have a right relationship with your Lord, the devil will have no access to your life. Then you go to the warfare. Then you say, Father, I receive your blessings. Lord, I receive your blessings. I thank you, Lord, that I am not under the curse, but I, the windows of heaven is open in my life. I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord, your blessing. Especially if you are tither, and especially if you are giver, and especially that you support the kingdom of God. I have a one sister who's calling us some time ago. She's a dear supporter of this ministry for a number of years. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when she go for some situation or her family go for situation, we stay in a gap and we say, Father, this is your daughter. She is faithful to your work. She is a supporter of this minister. Ministry, she is a tither. And you said in your word that you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour out the blessings up in her life. God move in her life every time. She and her family is blessed beyond the blessings. I mean, no matter where she goes, everywhere promotion, promotion. Marriage is blessed. Children is blessed. This is the blessings of God we're talking about. Because the obedience, not just to come into church, obedience and the tithes and offerings support the kingdom of God. Obedience in every area in our life. And this is when God promised that he will open the windows of heaven and he will pour out the blessings up in our life. Supernatural blessings. Supernatural favor in our life. Doors will be open. Supernatural doors. Blessings that you cannot buy with money that you try to put in your pocket and you think you're going to do something in that natural. See, the kingdom of God is working differently. Wherever we sow, and some of you know the laws, how to produce in a farm. You sow the seed, and you will reap in the ground. Sometimes you don't see for a while. It takes time to grow and see this harvest. But the same thing, the finances, when we support the kingdom of God, when we sow into the kingdom of God, where God wants you to sow, and how much, well, see, the, the 10%, the tithes and offerings, it's already belongs to Jesus. It's already, it's his. Some of us, some people just tip 
God. You go to some restaurant, you give a waiter $10 tip, and you bring to the church a dollar. Tipping God, tipping God, and, and then God bless me. That's not working. The word of God is true. God's word is true. So today I'm going to pray for you that God will open your eyes, spiritual eyes, that you, my dear sisters and brothers, will walk in obedience in every area in your life. Not just in this area, but this area, or where we're comfortable, but in every area. Heavenly Father, oh God Almighty, we know that you love us, and you know that you want the best for your children. And Father, we're here this morning, and we are your children. And we thank you, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you open your eyes children's eyes, spiritual eyes, Lord, that they will see, Lord God, of the importance of sowing the seed into your kingdom, Lord God. And Father, give them a revelation, Lord God. Give them an understanding, Lord God, of the power of the seed sowing. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as they obey you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you will open the windows of heaven, and that you will pour out the blessings up in their life. They will have no room enough to receive. They will be a blessed in a city. They will be a blessed in a, in a field. They will be a blessed in every area now in their lives, Lord God. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your sheep, they will hear your voice. And they will obey what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And Father, we give you praise and honor to you. And we give you honor and praise. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, our Heavenly Father. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. Pastor Larry is here. He's going to minister to us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. How's everyone today? Everybody blessed, happy? Amen. Well, it's a good day. We are here. Father, I release the anointed in this place right now to lift every burden, <coughs> destroy every yoke that is holding your people back. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare today the heavenly host is in this place. In the name of Jesus, to minister to each and every heart. Not only here, Father, but those that will be listening by the internet. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will speak to each of our hearts today. Open our eyes of understanding that we will know what is the hope of your calling, that we will walk worthy of who we are in you. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, glory. Woo, I feel that. <laughs> amen. You know what? We wasn't here on first Sunday, so we're going to have communion today after service. So just get ready. Okay? <coughs> Be ready for communion. And also, I want to thank you all for your support on uh, week, what that last week, week before last, we was in uh, Texas. Texas, yes. Remember, we took up extra money so we could, uh, so so the church could plant a seed. So all of you had the opportunity to plant seed in the Jewish ministry. 
Amen. We were able to, to give a significant seed from the ministry because of you. And because of you, the blessing that God came through that offering is going to, start, it's going to rest upon you. It's going to rest upon you. So release your faith right now for your miracle. Release your faith for your breakthrough. It's in the air. It's in the air. And it's yours. You receive it by faith. Amen. You don't look at man. Man is not the source. God is the source. Release your faith. Your miracle is in the air. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Father, I thank you for that. Oh, I praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. I'm still on fire from that conference. <laughs> that was a powerful conference. Amen. That was a powerful conference. You know, we're dealing with the we're dealing with the area of preparing yourself for the visit for 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 preparing yourself for the visitation of the Lord. Amen. That is our theme for this year. Amen. And I know other people have that theme but because it's 2020. Uh, they have their theme about the vision. About uh, the vision. Amen. But God wants to not only deal with the vision, God wants to deal with the whole man. God wants to deal with our hearts. God wants us to see our hearts. Because until we can identify with what God is wanting to do in our hearts, we will never excel in the thing that God had ordained for us to do. See, that's our destiny for each and every one of us. God has purpose and God has planned for everything that he has done and is doing. And folks, God never planned any defeat for you. God has never planned any defeat for you. He's only planned for you to rise above your circumstances, your situations, and begin to look to him as you have never looked to him before. Because he is and always will be God. We can't stop him. And the only thing we can do is do our part to follow him with all our heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, we've been talking, we started with this lesson on December Deal with the, 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 the thought that God is going to visit his people. Amen. <coughs> and I began to, and I went back to Genesis and I started to read some more stuff. And, and, and I'm going to take you back to the flood, before the flood. We're going to start when God visited his people. Right before the flood. See, God visited Noah. He visited the people of the land during that time. And he saw that the heart of man was what? Wicked. Evil. Violent. And God repented of himself that he had created man. And he decided he was, going to, he was going to destroy all men from the face of the earth. And he looked and he saw one man that he found that had that he found the grace of God in his heart. He saw this man and he saw the grace of God. He saw that he Loved God. He saw that he feared God. That don't mean that he wasn't a human being. That don't mean that he didn't do nothing, everything right. That means that he, he loved God. You love God, but still you make mistakes. Well, Adam loved God, but yet he made mistakes. Amen? Noah loved God, yet he made mistakes. And so, even though we love him, we make mistakes. God is going to deal with us in our hearts. 
because that's what's going to make the difference. That's why he visited the people in the book of Genesis after he had created them. He visited them and he saw their heart was evil. They corrupted themselves. And I believe that God, the Bible said he's still the same. If he visited them in that day because of their evil doing, don't you know that God is still looking? Even though he made a promise that he would not destroy the earth again as he did at that time. Amen. So let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 6. Let's start there. Then we're going to go to a few more. But I want to just share this with you because I believe that God is dealing with our hearts. Amen. And I believe that God is preparing us for visitation. Because he, I remember him telling me and has that been too long ago, folks? He said, prepare to tell my people to prepare themselves because I'm coming soon. It hadn't been too long ago when God told me that. He said, tell my people to prepare themselves because I'm, because I'm coming soon. And I started preaching the rapture. <laughs> and now he's telling me to prepare his people because I'm going to visit them. Mm. Oh my God! And what got me so bad? What 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 really what really got my attention concerning this message? That when I began to preach this message, I had one of the most strangest heartburns I have ever had in all my life. And it was a very very severe heartburn. Never had anything like that until I started preaching this message. And I made a decision in my heart that this year that I was going to draw closer to God. I was going to examine my heart and everything that was in my heart that was not been placed by God. That I was going to, I was going to uh, uh, renounce it. I was going to repent of it. I was going to, I, it, was, it was not going to go into 2020 with me. And I started preaching this message, prepare for visitation. And I had one of the biggest heartburns I have ever had. And, and, and I went down, I said, Lord, are you visiting me now? <laughs> I was scared. Amen. It was that, that, it was that severe. Yeah. Never had anything like that happen to me before. Amen. And then two days ago, I was out working. And the same thing happened again. And I thought it was going to go right away, going to leave me. This thing lasted about an hour. I, I was so disturbed by it, I went to the emergency room. I wanted them to do a, 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 a heart examination, a EKG and all that stuff. I wanted them to check my heart and make sure that my heart was in good condition. And they found out that nothing was wrong with my heart. Amen. They saw that they said. They asked me, have I been having uh, 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 sour stuff coming up in my mouth and all this stuff? I said, no. Are you, been, are you getting numb on, on, on your body? I said, no, none of that. Just a real dull pain right in the center of my chest. And they gave, they, they examined my lungs. They examined everything. They thought they had blood clots or something. They, they examined everything. They kept me in the hospital like four hours, five hours. I practically all day. And they found out that nothing was wrong with me. And, I, and then I, it, it, and it came to my heart. Because I'm preaching this message, spiritual witchcraft, supernatural spiritual beings was attacking me. And plus, on, and plus we, we started to get ready to go on this fast, and we're going to be uh, interceding for our country, for our nation, for, for Jerusalem, and, and, so, and so forth and so on. And I'm thinking, why is all, why am I under such an, uh, such an attack? And I, I realized, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against power. 
And so I began to I began to acknowledge God. I began to I began to cry out to God. And I began to and then all of a sudden all this stuff began to just And the peace of God as I pass of all understanding began to rest upon my heart and my mind. Why? Because I realized that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. That's right, And so I took my position as a man of God, and I began to pray, and I began to, I began to bind witchcraft. Every demonic spirit that was working against me, against my spirit, my mind, my will, my emotion, I began to come against it in the spiritual realm. Then all of a sudden, the peace. You see, your visitation may come in any moment. You don't know when it's coming. No man know the day nor the hour. But at the same time, we want to be ready when that time comes. That's why I'm examining my heart. I'm, 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 and, and every time God reveals, so every time, see, when, when I mean by, when I mean by examining my heart, I say, God, if there's anything in my life that you're not pleased with, then let me see it so I can get it out. Amen. And then when I went to this conference, oh my God, looked like every message was tailored toward me. And I'm thanking God, you took me serious. I said, thank you. <laughs> I said, thank you. Amen. Amen. Woo. My God, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that was a, a, a you, ever, you ever had your mind washed? <laughs> You ever had your mind washed with the word? My mind got washed with the word of God. Amen. My soul was made clean by the washing of the word. Folks, I want the same thing for you. I want the same thing for you. I want you to experience the peace of God that surpasses all the understanding. I want you to rest assured that if God would visit you, that you would be able to stand in his presence and not be like Adam and Eve because they made a mistake, because they sinned. They made themselves a, an apron out of fig leaves. And they went and then what they do? They hid themselves. They hid themselves. Why? Because they had sin. Because they had sin. People, it's time for us to. examine our hearts and it's time for us to see ourselves the way God sees us how does God see us first Corinthians now first first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 he says that you are a what a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people this is the way God sees us and especially Starting this Tuesday, we're going to start ministering. Matter of fact, we're going to start tonight. Because tonight we're going to be talking about prayer and fasting. And then we're going to go on into Tuesday on the same thing. Because starting Wednesday, excuse me, starting Thursday and Friday, we start our Daniel prayer three times a day on Thursday and Friday. 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. Three times a day. And the minimum you can pray is 10 minutes on each hour. 10 minutes minimum. First of all, we're going to be praying at 9 a.m. for the peace of Jerusalem. We're going to pray that the Jerusalem borders are protected. Their people are safe. Pray for the salvation of Israel. Pray for the leaders of Israel that they will make sound decisions 
by protecting the people on how to protect their people. Many things are happening in the Middle East right now. They need our prayers, folks. When you bless Israel, God's going to bless you. You bless Israel through your prayers, God's going to bless your household. That's our first prayer on, Monday, on, on Thursday morning and on Friday morning at 9 a.m. Then at 12 noon, we're going to pray for the fivefold ministry gifts. And then we're going to pray for our loved ones. We're going to pray that God will direct the fivefold ministry gifts in a way that they will hear his voice. That they will follow his, his, his will and his purpose and his plan in the earth in these last days. Darkness has covered is covering the earth at a strong pace. And we are the light of the world. We have to prepare ourselves that God, when he visit us, that we be found about our father's business. Okay, we're going to be praying for them. We're going to be praying for our families and everything. Minimum, 10 minutes. Minimum. You can pray as long as you want to, but minimum, 10 minutes. Then at 3 p.m., we're going to pray for America. We're going to pray for our leaders. We're going to pray for those that are in high offices. It's not about who like who and who don't like who. It's about obeying the word of God. We're going to pray for the president, the vice president. We're going to pray for their families. We're going to pray for all those that's in authority. In our city, our capital. Y'all hear me? We're preparing ourselves for our visitation. We're going to be found doing what God called us to do. Praying always. Pray without ceasing. Amen? So in the and at 9 a.m., we're praying for who? The peace of Jerusalem. 12 at noon, we're praying for who? The fivefold ministry gifts in our families. At 3 p.m., we're praying for who? The president and the United States of America and the leaders. That means our local leaders that is in government offices. Because, see, if the body of Christ is not praying for them, they make up all these ungodly laws and they get away with them because the church is not interceding for them. And we can stop all these ungodly laws from being established if we start praying. And this is what God, this is what's on the heart of God. And this is why God is saying, I'm going to visit my people because they are not doing their job. Woo, glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, in Genesis chapter 6, are y'all still there? Yep. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Genesis chapter 6, look at verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the Son of God, the sons of God, saw the daughters of men, of men that they were fair. In other words, they looked good. Amen. And they took them wives of all, of all which they chose. And the Lord said, "My nobody said right here, verse number three, my spirit shall not what? My spirit shall not what? Always strive with man. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that is also his flesh. Yet his days shall be a what? I like this part. A hundred and twenty years. So if you do right, and if you live right, God has said right here that the number of your years, well, how many? A hundred and twenty. A hundred and twenty. Hallelujah. I claim that. <laughs> I claim that. Amen. That 120. 
Amen. Amen. Look at verse number five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of their thoughts, of their heart, of thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. And he and it and it repented the Lord that he had did what? Made men on the earth. <coughs> and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will do what? I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both men and beasts and every creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. See, God visited Noah. And look what it said right here in verse number 8. But Noah found what? Grace in his eyes. In the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That doesn't mean that Noah never sinned. That doesn't mean that Noah never made a mistake. That means that Noah had found grace in the eyes of God. Simply what it said. And that was a message going around not too long ago talking about the grace message and all that stuff. And, and it took, I don't, I, I, I never got into that grace message because I always stuck to my assignment. Amen. But I want you to know, grace is good. Yes, it is. That's how you grace. Because without God's grace, we wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah. The grace of God is good. Now notice what it said, verse number nine. These, these are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked, no, what is it? Noah walked with who? Yes. He walked with God. He walked with God. Who else walked with God that we can read about in, the, in Genesis? Abraham. Abraham. Let's go back a little further. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> Adam. Remember his, his visitation? We talked about that on last time. Remember his visitation? He came, God, God breathed in the breath of life, and, 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 and God come back down in the cooler day and look, hey Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? I come to visit with you. I come to I come to communicate with you. I come to have fellowship with you. Where are you at, Adam? This is why I created you, so not for you to hide from me. I created you that we can that I can have someone to talk to. Where are you? And Adam, here I am. I'm hiding from you. Why are you hiding, Adam? Because I'm afraid I am naked. Who told you that you was naked, Adam? I never told you you was naked, Adam. Who told you you was Did you do what I said not to do? Did you eat up that forbidden fruit that I told you not to eat up? The tree that I asked you not to eat, not to eat up? No, oh, but my wife! <laughs> no, he got he got a complain now. My wife, the woman that you gave me, she made me to eat. <laughs> see, we, we see back then, men started pointing the finger at someone else because they didn't want to take responsibility of what God had told them to do. God visited him. That's coming to be another visitation, folks. And I say unto my people, today, if you are hard not your heart, but prepare yourself for my visitation, for I shall visit those who seek me not, and I shall visit those who are waiting for my visitation. I will visit them, and I will show myself unto them in a way that they have never experienced before. For I will not allow my word to fall to the ground. That which I have spoken to their hearts. Surely some of those things have not come to pass. But as they continue to seek my face and as they would turn to, my, to me with all their hearts, surely those things that I have spoken that would cause them to excel in the things of, of me, I will cause them to come to pass. But not as their hearts are wicked before me, not as they have turned away from me, they will not be able to re enjoy my goodness because of their, their wicked hearts. But turn to me, said the Lord, and I will return to you. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Notice here. Notice here. Numbers chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6 again, verse number 8 again. He said, but Noah found grace in his eyes, in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jehoshaphat. The earth also was corrupted before God. And the earth was filled with fires. And God looked upon the earth and, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. Notice what God said? The end of all flesh is come before me. Verse number 13. For the earth is full, is filled with violence. Through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He said, I will destroy them with the earth. Verse number 13, verse number 14 said, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, runes, Set thou mate, shut thou mate in the ark, and shut and, and, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Amen. So he showed them exactly what to do. Now I, I can, can you imagine Noah being said, you mean to make something right here? Uh, let me see, I got my three my got my, 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 my three sons and my and my, my my wife and we might be able to make something big enough for us. And God said, No. You don't understand. Okay. It's getting ready to rain. But what do you mean rain? I, never, I don't know about no rain. Okay, rain. No. <laughs> I want you to build an ark. Oh, but I'm going to. Big enough for me and my family. But no, no. You don't understand. It's going to rain. What do you mean rain? I want you to build an ark. Big enough. And I'm going to give you the dimension and I'm going to give you the size and I'm going to tell you how to, how to establish the room. But Lord, I want you to build an ark that will get the whole world's attention. Okay, God, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. I just me and my sons. Six hundred years later. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> Okay, Adam. No, uh, 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 no. I want you to. I want you to gather your little. Your, I want you to gather some animals. Okay, I got my little. I got my little dog. Okay, I got, my, I got my, my little. You know, my horse. No, no. I want you to gather two of every unclean beast of I, of that which I created, and I want you to get seven of the unclean. Mr. Seven of the clean. And I want you to bring them all in the ark. Okay. But we don't have a... Well, how are we going to feed them? What are we going to do? See, I can, I, can, I, I can see how Noah was thinking because he was asked to do something that he never did before. And it was way beyond his expectation. The same thing when God asks you to do something today. You never gonna. It's not. He's not gonna actually do something that you can accomplish in your own. And that's why we got to be ready for his visitation, because you might be visited with an, with, an, with instructions. You might be visited with with uh, 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 whatever the case may be. God, it, 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 he gonna look at your heart and he gonna and he gonna see that. Oh my God! I want him to look at your heart. And I want him to see. That he had found grace with you, just like he found with Noah. I want him to look at my heart 
and he find grace with me as he found with Noah. When my visitation come, I want to know that he loved me and he visited me to strengthen me, to encourage me, not to uh, uh, judge me because of the wickedness of my heart, not to destroy me because he only found violence and evil within my heart. I like what God is doing right here because you see, God is showing us that he loved his creation, but he's just not pleased with the heart of man. Let's look at chapter 8. I like this right here because you see, now we see that God not only established man's heart, not only, excuse me, uh, he not only uh, uh, asked them to prepare for the flood, amen, but then we look at what happened after the flood. After the flood, we see that Noah God visited Noah again while in the ark. Hallelujah. Look now at verse number 13. Genesis chapter 8, verse number 13. And it came to pass in the 601st year In the first month of the, the first month, the first day of the of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering from, of the of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Verse number fourteen, and in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried and God spake unto Noah saying see Noah he had this is his, another visitation that God is visiting verse number 16 go forth out of the go forth this is, go forth of the ark thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons wives with thee bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of the of all the flesh, both of the fowl and of the cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed what abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. Verse number eighteen. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. I like this part right here. We're going to get to something right here in a minute. That's going to, we're going to see that even though all Noah doing all this, what God is telling him to do, after all this settled, Noah going to, he's going to touch my heart. What we have, verse number, verse number of what, 19? Every beast, every creeping thing that creeping up on the uh, of, Every fowl, everything that creeped upon the earth after his kind, and went forth out of the ark. And Noah built, notice what he said, verse number 20. And Noah built what? An altar. Noah built an altar, verse number 20, unto the Lord. And took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled the sweet Savior. And the Lord said in his heart, I like this right here. I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from their youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. See, God established his word, and he's not going to take that word back. Verse number 20, 
2 says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. God is showing us everything that he did, he did for us to enjoy. Amen. He did for us to enjoy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting anything out of this day? Yes. Because you see, God is preparing to visit his people. And he don't want you, he don't want to visit you and you're not prepared for his visitation. When he visits you, he wants you to be expecting his visitation. He wants you to be expecting his visitation. Amen. Now, in, Gen in Matthew chapter 6, and verse number 25, it says, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 25, he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Notice what he said? Therefore take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor what ye shall, uh, what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they spin, yet your heavenly Father, uh, uh, neither gather in the barn, yet your heavenly Father feed, feed them. Are ye not better, much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to your statue? And why take ye thought of raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether withal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Right. Righteousness. And this is why Noah found grace in the sight of God. Whew, I feel something in this place today. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse number 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficiency unto the day is the evil thereof. Go, folks, we have, a, we have a charge to keep before God. We have a charge to keep before God, and that charge is to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We are the light of the world right now. The devil is doing everything he can to put the light out. Deception is running in, in, in through the earth in, in such a way that people have, are losing I, the, the identity because of the darkness that is invading the earth. And they think that it's so, and, 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 and they won't, they won't the rest of the world that, that 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 walk around trying to trying to trying to keep their sanity. They're trying to make you think that it's all right. When God is calling as wicked and God is calling violent, just like God visited the earth with the flood, glory to God. Remember, He said He will not go do that no more. And when it came to Abraham, He kept His word, but He did something different. He opened up the earth and swallowed up all of those wicked people that was against him. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about that again, but not today. But I want you to know and I want you to understand that God is looking at our heart. God is not looking at our clothes. God is not looking at what, where we live at. God is not looking at what kind of car we drive. He's not looking at how much money we have in the bank. God is not looking at none of that stuff. God is looking at our hearts. God visited men in the beginning because of their wickedness. And if God visited men because of their wickedness, then what 
you think he's going to do now? God is still the same, folks. He is still the same. He may not destroy you with a flood. He may not destroy you by opening up the earth because of your weakness. He have other ways. Remember, he's sovereign. And that's why it's time for the church to begin to repent throughout the earth. It's time for the church to get right with God. And stop looking at sin like it's okay. It's time to call it what it is. You can't look at a duck and say it's a turtle. That duck is not a turtle. That duck is a duck. <laughs> you ever seen a duck, a turtle fly like a turtle, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a what? <laughs> no, you've never seen a turtle fly like a duck. And you've never seen a duck crawl like a turtle. You got to call it what it is. And you got to call sin what it is. Sin. The penalty of it is death. And God is looking at our hearts. And I'm telling you folks, when I made that resolution at the beginning of the year that I would, that, 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 that God, I don't want nothing in my life, nothing in my heart that would interfere with what, with, so see, because see, God has a destiny for you. God has a purpose and a plan for you that he established from the day you was created. And if you don't get your, and, and if, the, if the enemy, if the devil gets you off track, if he gets you off, if he push you in the wrong direction, you're going to abort your destiny and death is not God's plan for you. Some of you are supposed to be billionaires right now. But you've been so sidetracked because of what the enemy has done and, and how he has brought you to a place where you are not able to uh, 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 rationalize and, and understand the vision that God placed in your heart from the beginning, he, he, he deluded your understanding and caused you to believe a lie rather than the truth. And now you wonder as a, oh, which way is up? <laughs> which way is down? I don't know. I've got, I, I, I got to figure it out some kind of way. God wants us to understand that we have been given, a, oh my God, we have been given a privilege. To serve God is a privilege, folks. It's a privilege to know that if I would die today, that I would spend eternity with him. It's a privilege to, to know that my sins have been forgiven. Because the scripture said, as by one man has sinned death into the world. <laughs> what are you, you okay? <laughs> huh? You got heartburn? No. You've had it for a while. Oh, my friend. Oh, take this. Oh, no. Not that kind of heartburn. Oh, oh, not that kind of heartburn. Oh. What kind of heartburn are you talking about? <laughs> the same kind I had? Oh, okay. Amen. See, God is dealing with our hearts. God is dealing with our hearts. And that's where it all begins. When we realize that God is dealing with our hearts, that's where it all begins. We begin to acknowledge God. Thank you for sparing my life. When, you, when I was a sinner, God, you gave your life. You came you came and you gave your life for me when I was yet a sinner. My God. This doesn't make any sense to us today. Because God is, God is showing us that 
He's given us a way out. He's given us a way out. Remember, he's not going to condemn you where you are, but he don't want you to stay where you are neither. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter, chapter 8, verse number 1 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after what? The flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. For the life of the spirit, for the for the spirit of the life that's in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So now we know that God has made a way for us to escape this eternal judgment. And it's through repentance. And not just turn a quarter away from your sin, but you have to turn all the way. 95 degree turn. This is what God is looking at. Our hearts. When God visits us, He's looking at our hearts. He's not just looking at your hearts, He's looking at the hearts of those that are behind these pulpits. Amen. They think that because they are preachers, they are safe. And they can live any kind of way that they want to live. No. They will be judged first. They will be judged first. Because they are the reason that the church is in the condition that it is in. We of all people must be first partaker of this message. Because God gave it to us first. And as it began to minister to your heart, you're going to find that burden that you've been carrying around all these years. And you thought there was no way out of it. You thought that you, you, had, you, had reached, you had reached the very point of no return. And God said, no. You've just reached the point where I can deal with your heart right where you are. And because you're yielding to my purpose because you're yielding to my will because you yielded to me at this point in your life now it's time for you to acknowledge God I need you I can't make without you if this because you've already you've already made this statement if this is all life this is if this is all to serve God I don't want I might want to live the way I've always lived how many of y'all have made that statement I know you have you ain't got to tell me but I know you have I know you have if this is if this is what it, if this is what it all about by serving God, then I just must live keep living the way I was living. I was a Christian for about four or five years, and I made that statement. I said, God, if, if this is all if this is what it's all about serving you, and then I don't want no part of it because I'm still living the same life that I was living, still smoking my dope, still drinking, still clubbing, still doing everything that I normally do. And, and then I went to the hotel room. I said, God, if this is all life has to offer, I don't want no more of it. And I went to that hotel room. I kneeled down on my floor. And I said, God, if you're real, then you can save me. And if you're not, and this is all life has to offer, I don't want no more. I'll check it out. I put a gram of cocaine in a spoon and I took a syringe, put it up in the syringe and put it in my arm. And I said, God, if this is all I'd like to have to offer, I don't want no more. And I shot it in my arm. I fell dead. <laughs> in Hotel 6 on Highway 20 in Decatur, Alabama, I fell dead as a doorknob on that floor in that room. Y'all listen, y'all looking at a dead man. And all of a sudden, I find myself being raised up off of that floor and standing me up straight on my feet and I heard these words, you will live and not die and you will declare the goodness of the Lord. And ever since then, I've never been able to not preach the gospel. 
you talk, you're looking at a dead man. And 10 years ago, we was at a church here in Sacramento, California. We was just serving God. My wife was born again in this church. We were just serving God, having a good time. I mean, we loved what we was doing, supporting the church and, and ministering uh, on, on the staff and everything. And in charge of the, uh, we, one of the staff members on the encounter, teaching in the encounters, uh, getting people delivered from demonic influence and, and setting the captives free. And all of a sudden, God said, I, it's time to depart. It's time to leave this place. And I said, why? He said, leave this place before you become contaminated. And I said, Lord, what's up? And the Lord didn't say nothing else to me. So I went to my wife. I said, honey, God said we got to leave this place. Amen. And, and she said, well, I'm not going. This is where I was born again. This is where I got saved. I'm not going nowhere. And I went back to God. I said, God, you heard her. She said, she's not going. <laughs> she said, she's not leaving. And God said, leave her alone. In one year, she'll be crying to leave this place, and she will not be able to leave until I say so. I said, oh, God, that is strong. And so I told her what God said. She said, okay, I can stay. I said, yeah, you can stay. Is that what you want to do? You can stay. <laughs> Halfway through that year, she was ready to go. Three quarters in the year, she's crying every service. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. The last part of that year, she made it up, up, and up. Mind. She said, I don't want nothing to do with it. I got to go. Mother. I said, God has not told us to leave again. When he asked you to go, you didn't want to go. We can't go until he said, go now. Then finally, he said, the Lord said, when she leave this, when, when she leave this time, she won't want to look back. I'm telling you, when God gives you an assignment, you may not understand it, you may not like it, you might think that, well, what's the matter with me? It's not, it's not always about you. It's about your obedience. And when God sent us out of that place, we went, we started having prayer meetings in our home. Oh, my friend, people started coming from all places to that prayer meeting because we had food after the service. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they were coming because of me. I know they were coming, they was, they was coming because of the food. Huh? <laughs> they were coming because of the food. But now, but now listen, listen to this. Listen to this. We thought that we had missed, we thought that we had did not hear God because not only did he call us out of the church, he told us to put our tithe in, a, in the savings account mm -hmm. and just wait. And so we thought that we misunderstood what he was saying to us. So we said, well, we have, we've, we, we've saved so much money. What are we going to do with it? I said, I, I said, honey, I don't know. God told us to put it in. Said, and so we kind of rationalized between one another. She said, well, let's just put it back. Let's just give it to him one more time. Just, let's just go see. We'll know if we're doing We'll know if we heard God correctly if we sow the seed back into the ministry one more time. And boy, that was one of the biggest mistakes we made. We took that money out of our savings account that God told us to, to establish, and we sowed it back into that ministry once again. Oh my God. It's just like all hell broke loose in our finances. That was the first time that had ever happened. We disobeyed God. And God showed us, when I tell you to do something, do it. And I'm telling you right now, folks, this message that I'm sharing with you, it's not from me. It's not from my, 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 my mind. It's not, because see, I'm having to study all this stuff as I bring it to you. And what is it doing to me? It's renewing my mind too. It's renewing my mind too. And when I give you these messages, I'm giving them to you out of love. Because I love you. I love all of you. And I would that none should perish. But that we all come to the knowledge 
of our Savior. From a pure heart. From a pure heart. To obey God in these hours that we're in right now is very vital. Very important. Please understand my heart. I'm not trying to, to get you to do something you shouldn't be doing. I'm trying to get you to do something you should have done a long time ago. God love you. Hallelujah. Father, I have delivered that which you placed upon my heart for today. I've even shared the portions of my own life which I know I will share more in days to come. But Father, we are preparing ourselves as a people for your visitation. For you have made it plain in your word that you will visit your people. You have visited and you will visit again. Help us to prepare our hearts. Help us to know, God, that if you visit us, that our hearts will be right before you. That everything that you have asked of us, Father, that you will find us so doing. We may not understand it, Lord, but show us and help us so that we will not be found doing just the opposite of what you've asked of us. But we will be found so doing that which you have placed within our hearts to accomplish in these last days. And Father, I realize that there's an enemy working overtime trying to undermine the things that you are saying and the things that you are doing. There are even men behind pulpits that are, uh, that, that are not going to agree with this message. But God, I believe that God, that even those that will oppose, that you will deal with their hearts as well. I will obey you, Father, no matter who opposes it. I'm still going to obey you. As long as I have breath in this body, I will honor you and I'll obey you. I know what it is to honor you and obey you, and I know what it is not to honor you and obey you. And I found to honor you and obey you is a whole lot better. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those under the sound of my voice. That that same conviction that you placed upon my heart to draw closer to you, I pray for the same conviction rest upon them. Not because of me, but because of you and them. Because my relationship with you is personal. The same as their relationship with you is personal. God, I thank you that you will manifest unto us because you said you would in your word. <clears throat> and you will show us your glory. We thank you and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You see, in the New Testament, God said he manifests himself to those that he loves. To those that love him. We're gonna, I'm going to show you that in the scripture. Not today though. <laughs> but I will show you in the scripture as we continue. Amen. So now it's time to take about morning offering. Amen. It's time to take about morning offering. Whew. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Those of you that are going to be sowing by the internet, you please go to my website, use your ATM card, your credit card, amen, and sow your seed there, amen. Or you, I put that, my address up there, up there also for my P.O. box. You can also send it to that address, P.O. box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. You can also send your offering in through that way also, amen. And uh, we're going to believe God with you and for you. Amen. We are praying that God 
manifest on every heart. Amen. His will, his purpose, and his plan. And I believe that right now is the time that you can receive God best in your life by honoring him through your tithes and through your offerings. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said, Father, to give and it shall be given unto us. So, Father, as we purpose in our heart to give, as you have given us, Father, we believe that the windows of heaven is open, that the devils rebuke, and we and our ground will bring forth the fruit in the season. And Father, as we honor you and as we obey you, Father, you're going to cause that enemy, that that thief that is working against our finances, to be halted right in his track. He will not be able to take that which don't belong to him. But God, even that which he have taken shall be returned a thousand times more, a thousand times more. And Father, we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. We declare, Father, that every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We believe, Father, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And Father, every tongue that rises up against us in judgment is condemned already, especially concerning our finances. And Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. We believe, Father, that your word will not return void. But it will accomplish those things which pleases you. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, I release that anointing right now as we give. Father, I release the power of the Holy Spirit right now to flow throughout this listening audience in the name of Jesus. Father, touch their hearts that they too will sow today, Father. They too will give today whether by the internet or send it in through the mail. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we're in a good place today, folks. We're in a good place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glad you guys get your offering together. <clears throat> and as they... My God. Hallelujah. We're going to pick up right here on next week where we left off at. Amen. On next Sunday. And we're going to march on. March on down the line. Amen. We're going to finish up with Noah. Then we're going to go into the next episode with Abraham. Oh, yeah. Folks. We are in for a treat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. We praise you. We glorify you. We give you glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you glory, Lord God. We worship you. We thank you, Father. Now, Father, we pray for this offering. We pray for this tithe. God, we release the anointing upon this offering right now upon every seed that's been planted today. God, you see the heart of your people. You know what they're able to do, what they're not able to do. And Father, you see how the enemy has come against their finances to try to stop them from doing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that devourer. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Lord, you said, as we give, the devourer is rebuked. Yes. As we give our tithes, you said the devourer is rebuked. And so we agree with your word. And I pray, Father, for those who fighters have come under attack. And I declare in the name of Jesus, as of this day, that enemy that have come against your finances is no more. I decree and I declare, as of this day, your finances has been released. And what the enemy has stolen, I decree that it be back into your hands. Come back into your hands in Jesus' name. A thousand times more. A thousand times more. And Father, I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. Now, Father, multiply the seed that was sown. Multiply the seed that was sown. Supernaturally, bring it back into their lives. In Jesus' name. And God, we thank you for it. 
We consider it as done in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, I pray right now for your people that have never invited you in their hearts, who never accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Maybe they have, Father, but some have backslid, some have turned away, Father, because they found it that the enemy was working overtime and trying to he was interfere with their, their walk with you. And they felt that they could not make it, Father. The devil lied to them, said it was no way that they were going to live a clean and a holy life. And Father, you said that they can. You said they can do all things through Christ who strengthened them. And Father, we choose to believe your word. We choose to believe your word. We rebuke that lying spirit. We come against that lying spirit right now in Jesus' name. And we cast it down. Now, Father... I pray that you would touch every heart and every soul that want to give their heart to you today. And for those that want to rededicate their life to you today, Father, I ask you to minister to their hearts as well. If you never said this prayer before, you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin, I want you to say this prayer for me right now. If you want to rededicate your life to the Lord right now, say this prayer for me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Today, I confess and I receive you in my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me, Lord, and come in my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. That's a simple prayer. But if you prayed that prayer from your heart, God has visited your heart just that quick. Just like that. Now the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of you. Rededicating your heart to the Lord, giving your heart to the Lord for the very first time, God is visiting you right now in the name of Jesus. He's visiting your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Father. Now, if you're here today and you have a special prayer request, I'll pray for you right now. Huh? Communion. All communion. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about communion. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and have a, 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 a share the communion right now. Amen. Those of you that are with us right now, you want to take communion with us, go ahead and get your elements right now, your juice and your cracker right now. Amen. And we'll all take communion together. It won't, it, it's, I'm going I'm to run straight through it. I'm not going to uh, keep you long. Amen. But I, I do want you to have communion for the month of January. Amen. So turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to go ahead on and do this. Amen. As unto the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now you, y'all get your, get your, get your cracker and your juice together right now. And amen, and let's go ahead on and and let's have communion together today. Amen. The Bible says in in, second, in First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse number twenty three said, "For I received of the Lord that all, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.'" After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. Verse number 28, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. 
For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Right now, we're going to judge ourselves according to verse number 31. We're going to judge ourselves. Amen. So right now, just, just, just you and God, just close your eyes. It ain't between, it's not between anyone else. It's only between you and God. You and God. J examine your hearts right now. And if the Lord reveals something to you right now in your heart that you need to get rid of, right now is the time to renounce it, repent from it, turn away from it. Right now. In the name of Jesus, let us judge ourselves. Thank you, Father. Father, as we pray and as we examine our hearts and we see those areas in our life that the enemy has, has withstood us, God, we renounce those areas right now that is of the flesh. We will not allow this enemy to taunt us anymore. He will not cause us to abort our destiny, the purpose and the plan that you have ordained for our lives. For my destiny is yet ahead of me. And I choose to hold fast to that which you have placed within my heart. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for them. And I ask you, Father, that you would cause their destiny to begin to surface once again in their hearts. Let them see themselves as you see them. I thank you for it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me if I've held anything in my heart that grieved the Spirit of God I renounce it. I repent of it. I turn away from it. Right now. Father, I present my body to you. A living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable. Which is my reasonable service. And today, I make a decision to not be conformed to this world. But my mind shall be renewed by the word of the living God. And I give you all the glory for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead on and pass out the elements. Hallelujah. My God, thank you, Father. <coughs> Take it before.
Everybody have your elements. This is a new one, but you got to learn how to use it. Everybody got your element? This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. In this, there's healing. Because of the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you receive this, purpose in your heart, God, I receive my healing too. Because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Let us partake of this healing element together. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for us at Mount Calvary. His blood was shed for the re for our redemption for the redemption of humanity. That you may be able to stand before a holy God as without sin. For many have sinned and shall come short of the glory of God. But God has made a perpetuation for us that we may be able to come and stand before him by acknowledging what Jesus did on the cross. Let us partake of this and let us remember as of today we are in right standing with Almighty God. We can stand in His presence. Let us drink. <laughs> Father, we believe that your word is true. And we thank you, Father. That we are not only walking in divine health, but we are able to stand in your holy presence as without sin. And we thank you, Lord God, for this day. 
marks the day of a new beginning for us as a church in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shaka. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There you go. One more. One more. One more. There. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you once again for this service today. We thank you, Father, for your presence that's in this place. Now, Father, we just give you glory. Let's all stand right now. Father, we give you glory right now. We worship you. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in our lives and our hearts. We thank you, Father, for a new beginning. We thank you, Father, for that you have forgiven us our sins and you have cleansed our hearts. And God, you've given us a brand new start as children of Almighty God. Father, we worship you. We praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. And we know that all things do work together for good to them that love you and for those who are called according to your purpose. We bless your name, Father. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Father, as we prepare to leave this place this, this, this afternoon, but we will not leave your presence. But, Father, we will meet back here tonight at 630, Father. Oh, God, we're going to prepare tonight for our fasting. We're going to prepare tonight for our separating ourselves from the things of this world. We're going to consecrate ourselves to you beginning today, tonight, God. Beginning tonight. And, Father... We're going to be consecrated for seven days. And God, we thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name. Oh, the presence of the Lord is in this place. We love you guys. Thank you all for joining us today. And thank you with us by the internet. We'll see you all back here tonight at 630. We love you. God bless you. Until then, you're dismissed. Amen. Amen.